Welcome. Um, this is PHY2048 and this is uh, uh, section A. Um, the section is called Physics and Measurement. Uh, my name is Anthony Bonacquisti. I'm the course instructor. And this section includes a number of things including uh, talking about science, essential math skills, units, prefixes, dimensional analysis, significant figures, scientific notation, factor label conversions and uh, word problem solving strategy. Uh, let's talk about science. I didn't used to talk about science much at all. I took it as a given that people knew what science was. But we live in days when people are saying, well, that's just science and, well, you scientists, you know, um, say what you like. It's not true. So we need to talk a little bit about what science is. And fundamentally, science is the search for truth. You do experiments, you get the results. You can have any pet theory you like, but the results will be the results. And if your theory doesn't go towards the, isn't supported by the, by the results, you've got to change your theory. So it keeps us honest and it keeps us searching for truth. There is a scientific method. This was the, really the genius of 1660s and, and uh, around that time people in Europe developed a scientific method. You recognize that there's something of interest. You hypothesize about what would happen if you did A. You predict that you'd get B as the answer. You do the experiment and assuming that you uh, were correct then you can start generalizing about the model that you've created and its structure. There's a series of uh, definitions we need. Uh, put them under the heading of scientific attitude. A scientific fact is a consensus of observations by competent observers. Uh, if you ask me about uh, an observation about a region of science that I'm not trained in, say weather systems, um, my observations would be quite naive. If you asked a competent specialist in that area, uh, you'd probably get more detailed and more insightful commentary. You'd be really advised to put more weight uh, 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 on the statement of the expert rather than me. So different people have different amounts of uh, sway in what they say because they have expertise. Expertise is good. Um, Scientific hypothesis is a testable, educated guess. We have a model. If we do A, the model predicts we get B. Scientific law, extremely well-tested hypothesis. Man, every time I do A, I get B. Every time you do A, you get B. Every time 20 other people do A, they get B. So we can say that um, there's a law. When you do A, you get B. And then a scientific theory, one of the most uh, uh, misused words in the English language, is a synthesis, synthesis of laws. It's not a vague guess. When people say that's just your theory, they are really misusing the term. A theory is the crown jewel of science. If you get a theory named after you, you have truly made it. So it's ironic that people misuse the term theory. A theory is a synthesis of scientific laws. It's, it's the most uh, uh, sophisticated thing. There's a statement that I think is often mis misunderstood. It's by Albert Einstein and it says, no number of experiments can prove me right, but a single experiment can prove me wrong. What this is really saying is that we build a model and while ever that model works, we use it and we're happy to use it because we turn the handle and we get the answers that we need. We test it regularly. Now, we'll keep on using it unless and until you or somebody else comes up with an experiment that our model mispredicts 
if our model says the answer should be, you know, cream pies, and the actual answer is cauliflowers, then we don't throw away the experiment. We refine our model, and sometimes we have to rebuild our model and make it uh, different. We're not saying we don't know much, because we're not allowing something to be proved. We're just being careful. We're being modest in a way. We're saying, yeah, we believe this is right, and my word, there's an awful lot of evidence to say that it's right. But even now, if you can prove us wrong, we'll gladly accept it. And that's not the same as saying we don't know. There is a culture in science, and those on the outside don't necessarily see it. Uh, science exists whether we believe it or not. Um, the universe follows rules that the scientific process works to, under, to, to identify and understand. So we might choose not to practice science, but the world will do what the world does. And if we want to predict the outcome of what the world's going to do, science would really help us. As science is essential. Societies fail when scientific process is not respected and its insights are ignored. If you've got to make decisions, best make your decisions based on good science rather than just guessing. Uh, science is ethical. Incorrect data hold back progress and destroy faith in science, so deliberate deception is often a career ender. There's an irony here, actually. If you do an experiment and the results that you get are not consistent with the current theory, then you have made a breakthrough. And if you follow that breakthrough, you may become quite famous. You don't get a Nobel Prize for saying, I got what everybody else got. You get a Nobel Prize for discovering something that nobody else discovered or making some wild accusation that turns out to be true. So although individual scientists may cheat, uh, they do themselves a disservice when they do. And the structure of science is such that it will be revealed and they will be exposed. And that is career ending. So we have to be careful of that. Science is based on dispassionate observation and testing. Uh, you can believe an opinion. You can have an opinion, but it is no value until it's supported by an experiment. Um, this is not to say that scientists are unfeeling. Uh, I've seen scientists really argue, uh, but the fact of the matter is, although they'll argue before the experiment is done, once the experiment's done, they both accept the outcome. Um, so it, it is uh, very self-regulating. Science is competitive. The public nature of science means that it is easy to compare people and it's easy for people to compete. If you perform better, you are rewarded more. I publish my work. People can read it. They can evaluate me based on my work. Other people do similar work and check my, out my data. If my work is not good, if it misses things, then it's shown. It's very public. Um, and the other thing to realize is that if you, can, if you can prove somebody who's big and famous to be wrong, you become big and famous. So frankly, although you know many scientists love Albert Einstein, if I could prove Albert Einstein wrong, I would do it in an instant. I would be merciless because then I would be very famous myself. Um, science is slow. The community makes steady progress based upon peer-reviewed work. Press releases are a new and problematic idea because they short circuit the tried and tested method. So uh, the scientific revolution, the basically the, uh, uh, during about the time of the enlightenment, they basically said, let's have an idea, let's build an apparatus and do an experiment, let's write down our experiment in a consistent way. And then what happens is it goes to a publisher and then the publisher sends that paper out for review and the reviewers feedback towards the information. That could take well, at least a year, if not two years. The work is published and somebody else sees it. They have an idea. 
and they do an experiment. <laughs> they then send it off to the publisher who has it reviewed and publishes it. I then see it. <laughs> I have an idea and I do an experiment. I write it up and send it to a publisher who has it reviewed and it is published. So if we said one year for that, after two years my paper is published. After another two years there's been a response from the community in print. After another two years I've responded to them in print. <laughs> it's a very slow process but what people say then really counts. It's a really good method of making steady progress. Science will improve the quality of life for everybody. It will not necessarily do it quickly. And we seem to be hung up on the idea of doing it quickly these days. Recalling the notes, true or false, science is a search for truth. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Which is, which, uh, is the term for a, science, a synthesis of scientific laws? Well, that would be a theory. True or false, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, no number of experiments can prove me right, but a single experiment can prove me wrong. The statement is correct, but it wasn't Neil deGrasse Tyson. It was basically um, uh, uh, Albert Einstein. Statement. You can have an opinion, but it has no value until it is supported by experiment. Well, science is slow, it's correct, but that statement doesn't support the idea. And science is essential, it's correct, but that statement doesn't support the idea. That statement supports the idea that science is based upon dispassionate observation and testing. So that's the best response. Those two go together. So there we have it. It's basically, uh, it's a wonderful philosophical thing to think about the scientific uh, method and the scientific community. If you're outside it, you tend not to know what's going on. And many of our friends and colleagues and family members are outside it. And it's our job to educate them and make sure that they understand that there's not five people sat around a table deciding to pretend that uh, cigarette smoke is harmful to us. Experiments show that it is. Thank you.